What's going on you guys? Welcome back to another episode of Film Camera Thrifting. Now today's episode is going to be a little interesting and before we actually get into the meat of the video, I just want to say that in the last month or so I've had a ton of failed attempts at making thrift videos and so this is really just going to be a compilation of all of the failed attempts um, and at the very end you guys are going to see kind of like a thrift haul. All of the stuff that I've picked up in January and February uh, will be displayed at the very end of this video. So be sure to stay tuned. But with that said, we did find a ton of crazy items and I'm going to show you guys at the very end of this video. Let's go. All right guys, so it's been a minute man since we've been thrifting and I had a little window in today's schedule to potentially just hit really one thrift store. Uh, not gonna be, you know, your most thorough kind of thrift video, but we're gonna hit one store and see if we could get lucky. Now, honestly you guys, I haven't really found anything in the last couple of months, anything worthwhile uh, to really make a video about. So we're hoping today, with our fingers crossed of course, that maybe we could find something good. Let's get inside, let's see what we can find and hopefully we find something good. All right, so we're hitting the soft plastics first. Usually I like to start here uh, because this is where most of the time you're gonna find the hidden gems. I'm gonna be unveiling you guys, you know, a couple of my secrets when it comes to thrifting that you guys could possibly utilize and take cameras away from me. So here we go. Bam, first camera find of the day. What do we have here? We have a little pointy shoot from Rico. This is a Rico, what is this? RZ1000, 998 right there. All right, gang, find number two right here. This one looks a little bit more interesting. I don't know if you guys can see that inside. Looks like we have a couple rolls of film. So I'm gonna pull this guy out real quick. Get your items one at a time, placing them in Okay, so it's been a minute since I've been to this particular thrift store. Let's go in, man. Let's see what we can find. Hopefully, we'll find some good. No freaking... Oh, again, man. We're trolled by the Olympus. Which one? Is Can I see that red case first? I think it's empty. Mm. It's empty. It's empty? Yeah. It's okay. empty. Uh, I think maybe you can tear the back in. Thank you. All right, first find, we'll take it. Whew. All right, you guys, so I'm in the thrift store right now. I didn't bring any other cameras, so I'm filming on my phone, but we are gonna be doing some thrifting today. Uh, I'm already in here, and so far, I've seen some things at the boutique, so let's check the boutique out first, and then I'm gonna head back to these plastics, search this, and see if we can find anything, man. Okay. Really quick, you guys, go ahead and get in the comments down below if you guys have found anything in the last couple months. Because honestly, I have not found anything. What the hell is that? That don't even look cool. Why am I touching it? What's inside? Whoa. Nikon M80. 
It comes with the bag too, huh? Yeah, everything here. Wow. Can I see the other two really quick? Fifty percent. Oh. What is this right here, y'all? Maximum five thousand with a fifty millimeter one point seven. Fifty percent off. This is how much. Friday din siya oh yeah. Friday din siya. Oh, Friday? Yes, sir. First find of the day, gang. All right, so I'm not exactly sure how many more thrift stores we're gonna go to, but I'm gonna try to hit at least two more before we call it a day. All right, you guys, we are back now at home and we found a ton of crazy stuff ranging from point and shoots all the way up to like SLR cameras. So let me grab the stuff really quick and let's get started showing you guys what we found. Okay, so the first item we found was actually at a thrift store that I've never really been to in the past. And so uh, showing up there, I had no expectations, but we did find two different things. And the first one here was this little Olympus red case. And as you guys can see, I did not even take it out of the plastic just yet because I wanted to save it for the video. I don't know if you guys can see that, but I paid six bucks for this little guy right here. And uh, I really just wanted to get it because one, I've never seen an Olympus red case like this. And two, uh, I think my Olympus XA would fit in here nicely. So here it is when you open it up It has these little magnets. I don't know if these are magnets or they just kind of clip in there um, But you guys can tell that this thing is a little age you get these nice leather cracking. It's definitely been used I'm not sure how clean it is inside of there. So I'm probably gonna give it a quick little cleanup. Okay. Yeah, it's magnetic Check that out. Let me grab my XA My guess is that if you were to have the flash on the X8, it would fit nicely, but let's just see how it fits here without the flash, just the X8 itself. So here we go, in the camera goes, and that is a very nice fit, you guys. That I'm almost believing that this was made for the X8, just with the way it fits inside of there. So uh, maybe I'll get the flash, put it on here, and uh, show that in a future Instagram story, but for now, $6 for this little red case. I think that's actually pretty cool. And that is the first find of the thrift haul. So bam, there it is. Now, along with that one, we did find a bigger camera and I'm sure you guys seen it in the video here, but we found this little Nikon SLR and I've never actually owned or seen one of these before, but this exact model is the Nikon Decision Master System N4004. I think the Decision Master System is this whole thing right here, but the camera is called N4004. Now I paid 30 bucks for this thing right here and here's a little packaging for it. Um, and honestly, I didn't purchase this camera for the camera itself. I really only purchased this because of the lens. Now the lens that's on here is this little Nikon 50 millimeter 1.8 D lens. And it's a little autofocus lens. I think it's still F mount. Uh, and what's really cool about this is that it still has the built-in aperture ring, so you could still shoot this on like your F3 if you wanted to, FM3A, uh, but I really purchased this whole setup for the lens itself. Now, I'm not sure exactly how much the lens goes for online, but it was in really, really good condition. All the apertures work really nice. There's no fungus, there's uh, really no internal dust, and so I took the risk and bought it for 30 bucks, and I think I came out on top. And it's funny that I purchased this for the lens because Something that we are gonna be revealing later on works really well with this thing right here. But the camera does work and so, I don't know, maybe we'll give this camera away or we'll see what we're gonna do with it, but it's a little chonkster right here. So that is it right there, the N4004 with the 50 millimeter 1.8 lens. So those two were all from the same day. Um, and the next kind of attempt that I went out, I found two point and shoots and I'm gonna show you guys right now. All right, so for the first one here, I already took it out the package, but it says $9.98, but I think I got 50% off, so this was about five bucks. But I got this nice little Ricoh point and shoot, and it's the RZ1000 date. 
Um, I'm a huge fan of like these boxy kind of no name point and shoots. I mean, Rico does have a name, don't get me wrong, but this camera is not like one of the more known point and shoot cameras. Something about cheaper zoom cameras and the images that they make remind me of images that were made of my childhood. And so I've always had a soft spot for these things. Um, and this one right here looking really sleek and uh, capable. I mean, it has a 38 to 105 millimeter lens. And I think this would be a great little camera just to throw around in your pocket when you go out to just want to shoot without having to bring a serious setup. So this camera right here for five bucks, I will not complain. It has a very interesting kind of layout as well. So here is the back panel to it. You also have the data back, of course, and on the top, it has a nice small little LCD screen. And honestly, I'm planning to do a little video surrounding this camera right here. Not sure exactly what it is yet. So if you guys have any suggestions, comment them down below because I definitely want to get filming with it. So the Rico RZ1000 date uh, point and shoot. From that same day, I found this huge kind of bundle here. And this one, for some reason, was a lot cheaper. It was like $6.98, but again, 50% off on top. And judging by the instruction manual, we have here a Fujifilm Zoom Date 90. I did purchase this, however, because there were a couple of rolls of film inside, and I don't know what it is, so we're gonna open it up right now. Okay. Instruction manual. Got this really kind of flimsy, degraded pouch. <laughs> Let's Fujifilm on it though, it's cool. Next up, we got the camera, of course, and it is a little dirty, and I think there's a lot of like these like specs on it because of the uh, the case kind of deteriorating over time, but yep, that is the camera. Not sure what I'm gonna do with this one. And then we have what's left is the film. So inside of here, we have three different rolls of film, and I'm guessing they're all gonna be the same, but who knows, we'll just go in one by one. So the first one here is Fuji Super HQ 200. And I really have no kind of, you know, knowledge on when these films expired. So when I do shoot them, I'm probably gonna rate them at like 50 ISO just to compensate. Um, but Fuji Super HQ 200, second roll of film. I'm not gonna be surprised if it's the same thing. No. Okay, so we got Fuji Superior Extra 400, but I don't know if you guys can see that. If you zoom in here, very small little detail it says return to costco for developing so this was definitely purchased from costco and it was really cool to see you know how back in the day film was that available you can go to costco and buy some film get it developed there obviously they don't do it anymore but yeah that's pretty cool a little kind of fun easter egg costco thing so fuji superior 400 and lastly last roll of film here another fuji it is uh, another one of those Superior 400s that says return to Costco. So that's super cool. Don't know if I'm gonna shoot these just because it has Costco on it, kind of like a cool collector piece, but definitely, uh, in my opinion, worth the money. You know, three rolls of expired film for three bucks. You can't go wrong with that. So that is the film and the camera from that little kind of bundle there. Now, surprisingly, those were really the only point and shoots that we found. The last camera that we did find though was the most expensive out of the bunch. Uh, it was going for like $54.95, but uh, they had a 25% off coupon going on. So I ended up picking this camera up for around 45 bucks. All right, so the camera came in this green Sigma bag, which by the way, is in really good condition. So I can't complain about that. Uh, Sigma bag right here has the little orange tag because it was the orange color going on. Um, nice little pocket and it has a couple of goodies inside here like a little lens cap, back cap there, this gigantic lens hood that doesn't even fit the lens that it came with. But yeah, that's the little bag it came with. But more importantly, you guys, the camera that was picked up in this little deal here was the Nikon F80. And the F80, from what I know, and I don't know too much about, like, not digital, excuse me, about automated Nikon SLRs, was that the F80 is kind of like the younger brother to the F100. So, now I'll be honest with you guys, I've always wanted a Nikon F100, but a buddy of mine told me, you might as well just get the F80, it's a lot cheaper, and I was seriously considering picking up this exact camera um, in a couple of months, just down the road. And as it turns out, while we were thrifting, we did find one. So, here is the F80, you guys, the lens that's on here, I don't care for it too much. It's the 28 to 80, excuse me, 28 to 80 Sigma lens. Um, but again, because we did purchase that other Nikon camera, we also got the 50 millimeter lens from this guy. So I'm gonna take the 50 mil lens and uh, I'm just gonna throw it on here really quick. And bam, you guys, there we go. So the F80 
80 with the 50 millimeter lens right here. Really good setup already. Now, I'll be honest with you, I didn't really wait too long. Right when I got home, I started cleaning it up. So if you see it now, it's probably in the best condition that uh, it's gonna be in because uh, obviously I cleaned it up, but uh, really clean camera. There's really no major scuffs on it. Uh, the grip was a little sticky, so I did the little alcohol trick and got most of it off and it's not sticky anymore. Uh, but the autofocus actually works really great. Camera functions properly, autofocus is quick, and uh, I can't ask for more, man. So here is the F80. I'm planning to do a couple more videos about it in the future. Uh, but this was really kind of like the major find of this thrift episode. So that pretty much wraps up all of our different finds for this entire thrift haul. I hope you guys enjoyed it. And let me know in the comment section down below if you guys are curious about any of these items. If you guys have any questions, comments, or concerns, I'd love to hear it. And at the end of each thrift video, I try to ask you guys, you know, what was your best thrift find in the recent months or in all time, really? Uh, I'm keen to hear what you guys have to say in the comment section down below. So thank you guys again for tuning in. As always, Minolta Gang. Whew.